In this video, we're going to take a look at the user interface of Autodesk Inventor. Here I have the hub IPT from our working files directory open, and I'm just going to use this as a backdrop as I talk through the user interface. So what we're going to do here is gain a greater knowledge and vocabulary around some of our interface elements. We're also going to troubleshoot it a little bit to make sure we can turn things back on if we inadvertently lose them. We're going to begin by looking at the model browser on the left hand side. Here I have the magical interface that shows me all my history about this part and how it was created. What happens if I accidentally close this off? I'm going to click on the little X here to close this. How am I going to get that back? We need to go up here to our View tab, our Windows Panel, User Interface Flyout, and choose to turn back on the browser. So that's a vocabulary here of our ribbon. We have View Tab. Windows panel, and then we have a flyout for user interface. Now some of our ribbon elements also have an expanded panel, such as appearance here. If I were to click on the appearance name, I can then see it has an expanded panel with some additional tools. Now there's not a lot here, but they traditionally create these expanded panels for tools that are not used as often. I'm gonna go back to my 3D model tab here at the beginning. And while we're on discussion of the panel, let's talk about turning different panel items on and off. Let's say I do a lot of plastic work. I knew that there was a set of plastic tools somewhere in an inventor, but I just couldn't find them. Well, it's because they're turned off by default. In the past, they actually were always on. But Autodesk found that only niche users really use the plastic tools. Not every user had a need for them. So if you want to turn those tools back on, you can go here to this little pull-down arrow and turn on your plastic part interactions. So here I have my plastic part tools for those types of plastic models I want to create. If you don't want them, just turn it right back off. Other things here at the ribbon, we have next to the Autodesk 360 tab, a ribbon toggling. If I toggle through here, it will minimize my panels and my tabs to different smaller interactions just to keep a cleaner screen. If I click through it enough though, I'll get back to my full ribbon. Other interface elements we have are the quick access toolbar at the very top of the screen. Here we have new, open, save, and the best command ever invented, the good old undo command, and his brother, the redo command. We also have the local update, selection filters, our ability to change materials and colors, and some other commonly used commands. Now, if you go up here a lot, you also have the ability to change this to be below the ribbon instead of above the ribbon. By doing that, it just gives you less mouse travel. So if you right click anywhere up here in the quick access toolbar, we can say show below the ribbon. So it goes down there. Or we can right click and say show above the ribbon, take it back up. If there's a command that you use a whole heck of a lot, let's say you like this new direct command. If I right click on a tool, I can tell it to add it to my quick access toolbar. I can also tell it to move to my expanded panel because I want it out of the way. I can also change button size as well. We have some commonly used things here you can do on commands. Here I'll add it to my quick access toolbar, and there you can see it up there near the end. If you don't want it up there anymore, same process to get rid of it. Remove from quick access toolbar. Now next up, we're gonna take a look at some of our application options for the software and how we can really kind of view the model. So if I go up here to the I button, this is our application menu in the upper left. I'm gonna do a single click up there. And here you can see some standard things like new, open, save, save as, I properties, which are really the metadata and all the intelligence of the file. What I'm gonna do next is just go down to options. So here inside of options, I've already toggled a few things which I'm more comfortable with. And we'll just kind of go through a few of these tabs. Here on the general tab, I've turned off my tooltip appearance. That way, as I'm hovering on things, you don't see all these flashing boxes coming up with little hints about how to use the command or what it is. I'm going to be doing enough explaining around that. We don't really need the tooltips. So I have the tooltips off, the document tab tooltips, as well as my tool clips, which are actually little short videos that the interface will sometimes play for you. Other things I like having turned on, though, are the dynamic prompts. This will take what's on my status bar, which is the lower minuscule area of the screen, that little gray bar, and it takes little command prompts there and puts them behind your cursor. Otherwise, you always have to keep your eye down to the lower part of the screen. So I like this up where the magic is happening. 
I've also adjusted my username up here so it shows the way I want it to see when I create a file or if I put that into a drawing title block. I also want to update my physical properties on save for parts and assemblies. That makes it that much more accurate for my modeling data. You can adjust your undo file size. The larger you make this, the more undos you can do. My annotation scale, I like that at one and a half, and I'll tell you why. I'm not getting any younger. The smaller these dimensions are getting on my screen, the more I have to squint, and the bigger my prescription gets on my eyeglasses. I want one and a half annotation scale instead to make the dimensions pop a little bit more for them to show up. We can go through all these other tabs as well, but we're going to do that in different critical areas of the discussion about the software. But the only other one I really want to look at right now are the colors and display tabs. On the colors tab, here I can choose a default color scheme. I'm going to be using winter night. So a lot of my colors as I'm going through the environment will be using this type of environment in the background, as well as the colors of my sketch elements will all be determined based on that color scheme. On the display tab, here I usually come in and adjust my appearance settings. If I have it set to document settings, it's always going to use the last known appearance that the file was saved in. And we're going to talk about appearances here in just a moment. But for now, I want to go to application settings. And when I click on the settings button here, I can specify how I want my files to appear as I open them up. I'm going to change my visual style here to shaded with edges because that's what I prefer. You're going to find the visual style you like, and that's how you're going to want to set it so that when you open files up every time, it's in the same visually appealing manner. So that's what I like. I'm going to say OK. Now, there are some other things down here as well, such as controlling how the view cube looks and the steering wheels, our look at behavior, our origin indicators, things you can toggle on and off about the interface. But I'm going to make some very minimal changes here. Basically, what you saw is about all I'm going to do. And the next thing I want to take a look at is how the interface allows me to view my models differently. So up here at the top on the View tab, I have a Visual Style pull-down. And here I can view my model in a realistic manner, which turns on some really nice ray tracing elements. I have the shaded default way, shaded with edges. And this is the one I really like because I like seeing these distinct edge lines. I also have shaded with hidden edges. The wireframe mode, wireframe with hidden edges, wireframe with visible edges only. I really like that one for large assemblies, so I don't have to calculate all those colors with my graphics card. There's also a monochromatic. And for whatever reason there is in the world, we have watercolor. Maybe a good prank to play on somebody, but I have never modeled in watercolor. I don't find it that nice. Some of these visual styles in here are honestly, just for a show. So like realistic, watercolor, monochromatic, and even the last one, illustration, they look good for like sales catalogs or quotes. They're not something you really want to feel comfortable modeling in. Pick one here that makes sense to you. Again, I like shade over the edges and just stick with one that you like. So this has been a look at the user interface for Autodesk Inventor. Inside here, we did a little bit of troubleshooting with turning elements on and off. We also show how to visualize our model in different ways, as well as got down our vocabulary about the ribbon and how to interact with where we find our commands.